<clears throat> okay, here we are at the Winchester Skunk Works. These are the leading edges for the 24s that will show up at AirVenture 2016, hopefully. And these are the trailing edges for the 24s that will show up at 2016. You notice on the long the length of these, all of the holes, we've pre-drilled all the holes to 3 16 These are drilled to 3 16 so then that, the, we use the 3 16 holes all along the length of these. We use these to put the glue in for the doublers. And the mandrels, the mandrels, as I think we told, talked about before, the mandrels hold the doubler, and you push the doubler in, you push the doubler in up to a hole, and then you and then you move it back and forth and turn it as the other person is putting the Loctite in there. What we use for that is primer N. We primer N these and then mark a line around the middle, and then we use a Loctite 680. Uh, for the for the Loctite that adheres really well. It gives you about a 30 second work time so when you start moving it back and forth and and turning it you've got about 30 seconds to get the glue all the way around the piece uh, before it hardens and then you can take your you can pull your mandrel out of the piece and the piece stays in the, in the tube. Done. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to put these doublers inside of the leading edges for the 24s. These are the leading edges sitting here, all four of them. This is where they join together. That part down there is where they bolt to the fuselage. And this is where this doubler is going to go, right here. And then we're going to put another doubler right here. This is the unit we use to do it. This is the rod. These are, these are different mandrels that we use. Um, the mandrels, of course, have to go inside the pipe that you're, that, you're, that you're using. As you can see, kind of right there. And we'll show you how this right, mandrel goes mandrel. together. It's got a hole through it, it's got a slit in it, and it's got a concave uh, area on this end. So when we tighten it up, this actually expands out. That, that goes on for against that shoulder, and then we put the, the washer, the little bevel washer, and we put that little bevel washer on. Put this tube, which is nothing more than an old tube I had laying around, put that tube over it. And then, of course, on this end, this end is threaded down here. That end's threaded, so on this end we put a washer, just a standard plain old flat washer, and the nut goes on. And then when we tighten this nut, it's going to expand the, span, the, so the mandrel. I, I just prime them, I use primer N, because primer N, uh, 649 Loctite primer N, has like a 30 second work time. And when I go to prime these, I just line them up like this, and I just kind of roll them and spray. Works well. Tube. Now this tube has already been rinsed off with acetone, and it's been... Uh, Prime. And then you mark these in the center like this. See, they're all been primed now, and they're all marked. We mark them in the center so that we can find, when we put them in, we look through the hole and we can find the center of the, of the doubler tube. Right. Okay, now we're going, to take, we're going to take this primed and marked doubler tube, we're going to put it over the mandrel, and we're going to tighten up the nut on the end, and we're going to put the lineup mark right at the hole. Right like that. There's the hole, that's how far we want it to go, right there. And then we're going to mark this end right here. So I know where, where, the, where how okay, far to go. Okay, now we're going to insert the, insert the doubler tube inside of our leading edge tube. And we know about how far to go. Should be very close to, to the blue line showing up on that okay, hole. Okay, now, now we've got the, the blue line right here. And he's going to put the Loctite in. And I'm going to move this piece back and forth while he's feeding Loctite to it. Got it. Right there. Right there. So now we've we've taken that doubler tube and we've moved it back and forth and coated it with Loctite. And we're gonna let that dry for just a second. And we're gonna take you off of there, put you back on there, and when that's dried just a little bit, it doesn't take long, it's dried by now, doesn't move. I'm going to take this off, and we're going to slide our, our mandrel ram, I guess, if you will, slide our mandrel ram out of the doubler tube. And there's the ram out of 
the tube and the doubler tube is still inside of there. Okay. Okay, here we are at the Skunk Works again in association with Stolper Aerospace. We decided to uh, design this little test unit here. There's been some uh, uh, difference of opinions as far as whether the doubler actually needs to be glued in or not and whether gluing the doubler in adds any strength. So our test, what we're going to do for a test is we're gonna, we've got this tube here that we can fit half inch rods through top and bottom. There's been a doubler that's been glued in on the top and the one on the bottom we're just going to slide the doubler in and put the tube through it. Then we're going to clamp it in a vise and we're going to we're going to destructively test it and see what fails first. Here we are. Okay. And um, this is our test piece and what, we're going to put this in here like so. We're probably going to clamp it this way. And this is the end of this is the end of the Pour doubler that's not glued. glued. We're going to clamp that down here. Okay, here we go again. Okay, notice that the, the end with no, where the, where the doubler was not glued, fractured. The doubler that is glued, not only did not fracture, but it's not damaged even in the least. So there you, there you have it. Uh, Skunk Works production in association with Solper Aerodynamics and Aerospace. We've decided conclusively that gluing doublers in makes sense.